making a video for science. Today is April 4th, 2018. Actually, no, it's not. It's really April 17th, 2018. But today would be April 4th if we were using the Julian calendar, not the Gregorian. So what exactly is the difference between the Julian calendar and the Gregorian calendar? Well, for one, uh, the Julian calendar was the one that was used since ancient times up until around the 1500s is when we stopped using the Julian calendar. And the Julian calendar counts the number of days since noon on the first day of 4713 BC. A year on the Julian calendar is 365.25 days exactly. So now you might be asking yourself, but isn't that the calendar that we use? Isn't a year for us 365.25 days and that's why we have a leap year every four years? The answer to that is sort of. The Gregorian calendar counts in a very similar way to the Julian calendar, except that its year is 365.2425 days long. So there's definitely a small discrepancy. It's about 0.002% difference. So in 1582, they kind of redid the math and figured out that the year is 26 seconds shorter than that. It's 365. 26 seconds. And even though that seems like a really small difference, over 7,000 years, that discrepancy adds up. And it's for this reason that today could be April 4th, 2018, had we not switched to the Gregorian calendar, which is a little bit more accurate in determining the rotation of the Earth as it orbits the Sun. Italy, Poland, Portugal, and Spain were the first four countries to adopt the calendar. And because it was actually cutting off time from the year, they had to skip the days October 5th through 14th of 1582. But transitioning to the Gregorian calendar from the Julian calendar was pretty slow. When the first countries started adopting, they were primarily Catholic countries. At the time, England was heavily Protestant and saw this calendar change as a way for the Catholics to suppress the Protestant movement. It would be another 200 years in September of 1752 before England and its colonies all changed their calendars to the Gregorian calendar, in which they cut out September 3rd to the 13th. The calendar change was so profound that Benjamin Franklin famously said, it was good for an old man to go to bed on September the 2nd and not have to get up until September 14th. Even with England's adoption of the calendar in 1752, it still took the rest of the world centuries to catch up. For instance, Russia didn't adopt the new calendar until 1918, and Greece, the last European country to adopt the calendar, didn't do so until 1923. In fact, Greece went straight from February 15th to March 1st overnight. Greece and Russia, Russia was 1918, Greece was 1923. So. It's taking countries a while to catch up to, to catch up. our actual calendar. All right, okay. But, uh, there is one lesser known aspect between the two calendars. On the Julian calendar, a year is exactly 365.25 days. And because of that, we have a leap year every four years. When the switch was made to the Gregorian calendar, there was a pretty radical difference in what would happen with the leap years. We take for granted that leap years occur every four years such as 1996, 2000, 2004, 2008, 2012, 2016 was the last one, and 2020 will be the upcoming one. But the math of the Gregorian calendar doesn't quite add up as neatly as that of the Julian calendar, and that's just because the Earth doesn't move how the Julian calendar says it moves. The rule for leap years under the Julian calendar is just every four years, but the rules are different for the Gregorian calendar. The math of the Gregorian calendar states that any century that isn't divisible by 400 will not be a leap year. 2100, 2200, 2300, 2500, 2600, 2700, 2900 will all be the skipped leap years in this uh, millennium. Wow. Whereas 2400 and 2800 will be normal. Okay. Years. So, yeah, just kind Good of. Know. Yeah. yeah. That's fun. Things awesome. nobody really knows and is go are going to happen in yeah. the future. Yeah, I definitely cool. didn't know that. That's so. neat. Interesting. <laughs> Yeah. So our grandkids won't have a leap year in no, 2100. No, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> so countries who are late adopters of the calendar haven't yet seen a century without a leap year. So in this millennia, there will only be two centuries that actually have a leap year in them, 2400 and 2800. It's this kind of celestial mathematics that really makes you think, 
how calendars are going to operate when we colonize the moon and colonize Mars and venture out further into the solar system. What sort of calendars are people of the future going to be using? And it's not just about the calendars, it's also about the relative nature of time itself. Because as you move closer to less massive or more massive objects, time speeds up or slows down. We can actually physically measure how much gravity affects time relative on Earth and up in space by watching the clocks on satellites. Every few years, we actually end up adding one second to the end of June to account for this time change. If we didn't negotiate the time like this, our GPS systems would actually fail us. If you were trying to use a GPS to get somewhere, it would show you as miles off from where you actually were because it wasn't properly aligned to your specific coordinates and time. And there are actually several documentaries on the internet that show tests of people taking atomic clocks up to the top of mountains and keeping other atomic clocks at the base of the mountain. And overnight, there's actually nanoseconds of difference between the clocks. It really is a cool concept to explore. And in future videos, I will definitely be talking more about it especially with the public. Making calendars like this is actually something that I myself have dealt with because in my book series, I have a different calendar for every single planet and they have their own length of day and travel times and stuff. So I have a different calendar for all of those. It's just something that's really fascinating to me. So I hope you learned something from this and I hope it makes you question the true nature of our timekeeping systems.